all around me. Come and have your way. I'm looking at the dry bones. You're reviving this faith inside of my soul. You're igniting. I feel you running levels that are higher. I can see your face when I say my. When I look your way, everything else fades. When I look your way, everything else fades. To gaze upon your beauty. Full of water, the world's falling behind me. There's no other, no other name like your name, and there's nothing that can take your place. When I set my eyes on you, everything else fades. When I look your way, everything else fades. Beside me, the winter storms made way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. All
Addiction starts to break, declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love.
I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Yes, I do. Jesus over everything. Oh, Jesus over everything. I speak the name of Jesus. your faith rise. There's power in the name of Jesus. All you have to do is call the name of Jesus. I speak Jesus over every heart and every mind in this room. He's got you. You don't have to be afraid.
Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm, of course, bringing to you service uh, live here from Angelus Temple on this Thursday night. Everything's different, of course. Uh, you've got the announcement about uh, some of the issues we've had with the rooftop. There's a little piece up there that, that fell to the ground on the rooftop, some of the facade uh, that's there, just a small piece, but uh, it kind of generates a lot of speed on the way down, if you know what I mean. So... We're here tonight. We're working on it. We will give you an update uh, probably around Friday evening regarding uh, services going forward on Sunday, possibly, um, if we can get this uh, little repair done in time to make sure that it's safe. We just wanted to err tonight on the side of safety to make sure that everyone just feels like there's no sense of apprehension looking up and uh, seeing like a, a little crack up there. And uh, we're assessing to see really how feasible it is to get back on Sunday. We will let you know. And uh, just know that when you do come back, it's going to be very, very safe. But it was something that we looked at and thought, well, it's not, the, it's not the whole roof. It is a small piece, but it's enough to kind of cause caution for tonight and to make sure that we get uh, something in here to be able to go up and uh, make the repairs possible to be ready for service. So uh, to just give you a little heads up on that, um, we're just working through that. Again, you'll know on Friday night. Uh, the problem is this. The problem is you guys just praise the Lord so loud. You were so intense that you just brought the roof down. I mean, you really did. So uh, that's, that's on you for your worship. No, but seriously, thank you for tuning in tonight. And uh, if it has to be tonight and Sunday, I think we'll get to move on this pretty, pretty fast and, and get going forward. But this is a very unusual circumstance. Of course, right? It's a dream center. Uh, something like this would take place because uh, everything we do is a little bit abnormal. But tonight, I really believe that God's given me a great word for you. I'm going to be delivering in just a few minutes. But before we do that, I would encourage every one of you to uh, give in the offering tonight. We're receiving this offering. And how many know it's important that when you go through testings and trials as a church and, and surprises that you always have uh, the ability to rise up and to step up during those times. And this could be easy for many of us to kind of take the night off and say, well, you know, it's, we're not in service, but this is also a chance for us to do something extra special, to rise to the occasion and to do something great during difficult times. So I just want to encourage you tonight um, as you're watching, could you just do something extra special today uh, just to keep the work of God going forward and ministry alive and strong? So I just want all of you just to do your best tonight. Trust God in your giving, and uh, let's just see the Lord do a wonderful work despite the challenges and the battles, it just seems like we've gone through everything, right, over the last few years. But God has been so good, and you have been so kind and so gracious. So right there on the website, um, there's a ways that you can give. You know how to do it, the regular ways, through Angel's Temple, right there. And um, that way, it would just really be encouragement to the ministry tonight, uh, during this month of June, to rise to the occasion and to step up and give. Maybe a few can do something extra tonight to make up the difference, but all of us can do something tonight. And I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your kindness. And uh, I know that the Lord's going to use you and all of us through this time. Um, it felt weird walking through here. It was like the, like the former pandemic days, right? I'm walking and doing service again online. Um, but tonight, it's just a great joy to be with you today and to, and to see the Lord do a great work. Turn your Bibles to Judges chapter 12 in verse 1. Um, the title of my sermon uh, tonight is, I put my life in my hands. I put my life in my hands. I'm very excited about this message. I, I, I study this character in the Bible, uh, Jephthah, and when I read this, I thought, wow, this is going to be a message about uh, what well, some of you are going through during this season of your life and during challenges of your life. And this is kind of a sermon that we all need to kind of tuck away in the bank. Uh, a message that we all need for certain times in our life. Je uh, Judges chapter 12 and verses 1 through 3. The Ephraimite forces were called out and they crossed over to Zaphon. And they said to Jephthah, why did you go to fight the Ammonites without calling us to go with you? We're going to burn down, your, burn down your house over your head. 
And Jephthah answered, I and my people were engaged in a great struggle with the Ammonites, and although I called, you didn't save me out of their hands. And when I saw that you wouldn't help, I took my life in my own hands and crossed over to fight the Ammonites, and the Lord gave me the victory over them. Now why have you come up today to fight me? Lord, use these words today, and I just pray encouragement and blessing upon your people. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I could title this message, What to Do When Everything Goes Against You. Have you ever had that feeling in your life that, like, everything is going against you? Um, you know, rooftops, uh, battles, struggles, uh, everything. And so uh, Jephthah looks at his life, and Jephthah was a man who truly was a mighty man of valor. He was a general of an army. He was a, he a hero, and he was such a great man of God that he was actually placed next to Abraham, Moses, and Hebrews in the uh, Hall of Heroes in the Bible. But Jephthah looks at his life and realizes that he had many things against him growing up. Jephthah was a man. He had no father he could go to. He was a, his father was an unfaithful man. He was a wicked man. He did many horrible things in his life. And so he never had a father to go to. The truth is he was an illegitimate child. He was born out of wedlock. And he just spent his life with no one to go to. And there's nothing more sad, right, than a young man that has no one to go to in his life and he's raised up and alone and in isolation and trying to figure out how to live his life. I think what we're seeing now in America with many 18 to 21 year old males who are isolated or maybe fatherless or even motherless, just kind of raised on their own and raised in isolation and raised in chat rooms and, and different forms. And, and what happens to many of these young men is they get to a place where they have no one to mentor them and so they find these odd relationships online and uh, these communities online and it produces a lot of really bad things in their life and Jephthah you know he was a young man in the Bible that he he just he was isolated he didn't really have anyone to go to and that's why this story is so exceptional about the kind of person that he was he had no father during the toughest times to which he could go and that isn't all Jephthah also was a man a young man who had no mother by which to go to his mother was a prostitute, and he was born out of her as an illegitimate child. So he had no father. He had no mother. And that isn't all. He actually had no brothers and sisters to go to at all. And because he was an illegitimate child, they kicked him out of the household, and they, nobody wanted anything to do with him. And, and you know, it's, it's dangerous because people begin to label Jephthah as an impossible case and I think that's what oftentimes we do in America and we do really as a world. We try to predict because of somebody's uh, social economic background what a child in the womb will be if it was delivered. And we try to say, well, if I bring this child to life, it will become this, so why even bother? But the truth is nobody really knows what a person can become. God has the plan. God has a way of deciding what a life will be, what they can overcome, what adversity they will rise up in the midst of all of that. And so you really can't predict what God could do in somebody else's life. And God's plan for people's life is always greater than man's forecast. But Jephthah had no one to go to. He had no father to go to. He had a, he had a mother that was a prostitute. He was an illegitimate child. And because uh, he, his brothers and sisters, you know, kicked him out of the old house, he had no one to go to. He had no family to go to. And here he is. He's in the crisis of his life. He has no counsel, no mentors, no one to talk to, nobody to care, no fathers, no brothers to go to, no sisters, nothing. But that wasn't all. He also was a young man who had no inheritance, and he was disowned by his own family. No future security, no financial security for the future. He lost his own countrymen at the same time. His country turned on him. His best friends turned on him. And he's in the hardest part of his life. He's in a crisis, and no mother, no father, nobody to go to. And finally, he ends up in a place called Tob in the Bible. Now, Tob was a place where uh, many of the unemployed freeloaders lived in that land. And so he's completely alone, deserted in a place called Tob with a bunch of kind of dysfunctional people that were just kind of freeloaders off the land and, and uh, nobody to go to in his life. And that isn't all. Even the, 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 the other tribes turned on, the, the most famous and wealthy tribe, um, Ephraim, turned on him. 
And Ephraim was the strongest of all the tribes. And Jephthah goes to Ephraim and he seeks help to them. And, and uh, he got, he's got a battle to fight. He's in a crisis of his life. And, and uh, Ephraim turns his back and they won't help him. And there he is. And many of you have been there at a place where nobody understands. You feel like nobody has time for you when you go to them. You feel like nobody can understand your heartache. Nobody can understand the battles which you face. And frankly, nobody really cares about the battles which you face. And then Ephraim comes to him and he, and he says, uh, uh, you were in the battle. Ephraim says to, uh, to Jephthah, why didn't you call us when you were in the battle? And Jephthah says, I did call you, but you ignored me and you wouldn't help me. And this is what he said. He said, so therefore, I decided to put my life in my own hands. The truth is, this guy's alone. The usual form of encouragers are not available. He's by himself. And now he has two choices in his life. Now, you might be here, and I've been there many times in my life, where you have only two choices in your life. And that is, you got to keep going on your own, or you can quit. The usual sources are not there. The usual companions are not there. You either decide that you're going to go on, or you're going to quit. Now, the truth is, it's always better never to have to go alone in life. It's always better when you have people to help you get to where you need to go and to be vulnerable enough to turn to people in those situations. But there are times in life where there's nobody dependable by which you can go to. And, and Jephthah said this, in those times of my life, he said, I decided to put my life in my own hands. No matter what, I am going to take responsibility for what happens. And if nobody else is around, I make a decision today that my life will become whatever I decide that I will make my life. In other words, when there's no one else to help me, God can give me the strength and the power to go it alone when there's times in my life where there seems that there is nobody to carry the burden with me. And we will all get to that place in our life. And when we get there, we have two choices, to turn back or to say, I will take life in my own hands. I put my life in my own hands. This is a very courageous statement because this is a man that has nothing left. And rather than having nothing left and decide that he's going to live like he has nothing left, he, does, he makes a decision, and that is, God, if I have to go it alone and be the general that, that I need to be in the, in the fight that I have to fight, I will do it. And that's what you call a champion right there. And you'll find out what comes out of a person in times like this. And I face times in my life where I've had to go up myself or quit, but I've got news for you. That's the times in your life when you face it and you seem that you are alone, that you're never alone, but those are the times we have to grow through it. You're going to face it at some point in your life. You will. The day will come when that mentor that was always in your life is no longer around. The day is going to come where that family member that maybe has always been that trusted advice might move on and pass away. The day is going to come where you're going to have to look at certain things all by yourself because maybe even the people that you love who give you good advice have never been through what you've been before, so therefore have no context by which to help you in that situation. And let me tell you, that's the times when you have to go to God and say, God, be, with your strength and your power, there are moments where I have to go it alone. I've got to face it. You give me power. I may live, I may die, but I will never turn back. And that's what Jephthah said. He said, everything in my life around me has crumbled. Everyone to go to is no longer there anymore. Every uh, army that was supposed to help me has turned their back on me. And he said, in spite of all of that, I will keep living. I will keep advancing. I will be a champion. And Jephthah didn't get his name in the book of Hebrews because he was an Abraham, you know, the father of the nations. Or he didn't get his name in Hebrews because he was mighty King David, the king of Israel. That's not how he got his name into the hall of fame of heroes in the Bible. 
Jephthah got his name into the Hall of Fame because he said one thing. If I have to go it all alone by myself, I am willing to do it. I am willing to take my life in my own hands. He wasn't saying that he was going to do his life in the flesh and just, you know, make his own life out of it. He was saying, I do have the power when I need it to face the struggles and life battles that I have with a God that is by my side. And I'm speaking to someone today that feels like that God has left you and you are all alone and there's nobody by your side. You can make it through those storms. God can give you the power to rise up in those battles. And he said, I will not turn back. If no one uh, prays for me, I will still keep going. If my family never read the word of God over my life, I will still keep going. If my, if my dad was never sober, I will still keep on going. Amen? If my dad was never pure, I will be pure. If people around me were never righteous, I will be righteous. If everything around my life is illegitimate, I will live a life that's legitimate. And it's time that some of us got a little tough with the devil, put your shoulders back, and decided tonight, I'm going to take my life into my own hands. I am going to rise up and take what I have left over. I'm going to give it to God and say, God, if all I have is the adversity and pain of life, but you are all that I have, and I have to simply say, here I am, God. Here's what I have. I give it to you. Together, we are going to go forward. You still can make it. I will not indulge in self-pity, he said. I will not let the heartbreak be the thing that defines my life. I will not let the sorrow uh, take me down to a sorry type of life. And maybe today you're facing a, a, a sin battle that you're facing. The truth is, and you have really nobody to go to. You've got to kind of uh, and talk to somebody. And, or maybe those resources just aren't there in your life. And if you do have that place in your life where you feel that nobody cares, you need to say like Jeremiah, is it nothing to you that, that pass by? Is it nothing to you that just keep moving on past me? That's what Jeremiah said. That was the sorrow of his life. But he just kept on going. Just keep on going. Forget about self-pity. Don't consider quitting. Put your life in your own hands. Say, God, you have given me the power to look these struggles in the eye and to overcome those things in my life. I like this guy. I like Jephthah, man. Everything in life was working against him. But instead of being defeated and crumbling and saying it's over and turning to all these other things in life that could have... Um, wiped him out. He says, I'm just going to get a little bit stronger. When the dial gets turned up, I'm going to get a little bit stronger. When the battle gets uh, turned up, I'm going to get a little bit stronger. And he rises up and he succeeds despite the fact that the headwinds of life are against you. And that's why I love this church. That's why I love the people in this church. We got a lot of Jephthahs who were born in difficult situations or they created difficult situations by themselves, by the choices that they made, but they decide that with God on their side, everything is still possible and they will not be defined or crushed by yesterday's circumstances or today's realities. They are going to live under tomorrow's promise that God has. And let, let me tell you, Jephthah said, he said, I and my people were in great strife with the children of Ammon. And they said, when I called on you, you delivered me not out of their hands. And when I saw that you delivered me not, I put my life in my own hands and passed over against the children of Ammon and the Lord. I faced some battles in my life, but he said, I will go on. I will fight. I won't surrender. I will not depend on another army to deliver me. God is going to bring me through. You might be in the midnight hour tonight and don't know how you're going to make it. Keep on going. Just keep on going. You and the Lord. That's all you have is you and the Lord. You just got to keep on going. And there are moments in life where you can call people that you love and trust and they just won't give you an answer. And you have no solutions to these situations that are complex in your life. And the Lord delivered them, he said, though, into my hand because I put my life in my own hands. And I want to serve the enemy notice that you and I and all of us together, we're just going to keep on walking. 
turning forward and onward towards God, uh, and just living a light that says circumstances are never against the power that God and I have in partnership together. Jephthah was saying, there's nothing that can stop me unless I decide that I will stop myself, that I will decide that I am overwhelmed by my circumstances. As long as my heart is not overwhelmed and my heart is alive, there's not one thing that will stop me. And that's the kind of spirit that we need to have in our life, a belief that God is so alive, that God is so powerful, that God is so strong, that even when there's times where we say, God, I'm taking these matters in my own hands, but then I present them unto you. This is what I have. This is what I'm dealt with. This is the, the, the cards that I'm faced with. This is a situation that I have to live under. When I'm in those situations, it's okay. I can make it. Because even when I have to go it alone, even when there's times in my life where I'm sitting up in that balcony in discipleship and every single thing in life is turned on me, and I'm all alone. I've done something powerful, and that is I have decided to take life and the circumstances there and say, if I have to go it alone, I'm going to make it because if God is for me, who can be against me? I can overcome. And Jephthah was faced with every excuse of why he should never continue to move on with his life. But instead, he decided to understand that there is power in one person's individual decision not to give up. There is power in saying, here I am, God. Whatever happens depends upon me and my ability to trust you for more power and more strength or to run and to hide and to quit. And there he is. There's old Jephthah, a man who should be on the Jerry Springer show, right? I mean, he should have, like, all these issues built up, and he should be the guy, like, sitting on the couch and assessed of why he is a failure, why he deserves to be a failure, and why he should forever be uh, a stigma or something that is labeled in the world. But he didn't. He didn't. Instead, he decided to be a champion. And when everyone turned their back on you, and even in war, from the time that you were born to the time that you were in battle. And you really could never find somebody who understood. You are a man that simply said, I put my life in my own hands. And I trusted that God would bring me through. Today, there's some of you that are facing a lot of circumstances alone. And should we always live our life alone like that? No, we should seek help. We should seek everything we can. But there are times and there are situations where Man cannot give you what God has ordained to be the solution to your life. And maybe those things that you've gone to have run out. And maybe they needed to run out so that you can trust God first. And go back to that relationship of saying, God, you are the one that brings me out. You are the one that brings me through. You are the one who fights my battles. And I'm speaking to someone that's going through a challenge right now. And you feel alone in that battle. You are not. You are a God who is a God that is greater than the circumstances, a God that is greater than the numbers, the opposition, the battles, the statistics, and all the reasons why you shouldn't make it. God is greater than every excuse, every forecast, every number, and every situation, and he is big enough to bring you through. Just simply say tonight, God, I am not going to quit. I'm going to face my battles, and like the Jephthah, here I am, dealt with what I have left. But even if I'm in a situation where I have got to fight and be alone and struggle in a place that's difficult and challenging, I have you, God. And I'm going to learn to trust in you every step of the way to where you are my source for everything. Whatever I get from man is a bonus, but my relationship is solid in my trust and belief in what you can do. Get that foundational relationship back with God that says, when all else in the world comes against me, I know I'll get to the other side. Every head bowed, every eye closed, and you're watching right now, or maybe you're in your car, your cell phone, your living room, or whatever you may be, but you're here in a place where you just, 
The odds are stacked against you so much to where all you can think about is how much the odds are stacked against you. I want you to change your focus right now and just change on the fact that maybe the odds are not stacked up against you. Maybe you just need to understand that the odds are actually for you because you have a God that has a way of working you through every battle, every trial, and getting you there. The enemy does not want you to think about all you have in Christ. He wants you to think about all that has been left behind in your life. But don't do it. Allow God right now to give you the spirit of Jephthah that says, Lord, here I am. I'm in a lonely place, but I can get through to the other side because I have you. If you're in a place where you want Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life tonight, I want you to repeat these words after me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross that I will be saved. I can do all things because you've done everything for me by dying on the cross and saving my life. I have battles, but now I have you, and I can overcome anything that I'm faced with. I trust you, Jesus, as my Savior today. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us here tonight in church. We love you. We will keep you updated regarding what's coming up next. But let's just finish this service. And during this time of worship, as we close out, I want you just to think about how much the Lord loves you, how much he's on your side, and how you will get to the other side of whatever battle you're going to. So just raise your hands right now. And let's just worship the Lord in this final song. You, know, you will not be overwhelmed. I'll never be more than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up. So there's nothing I could do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved. Than I am right now. Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You would cross an ocean, so I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now. Jaira, you are enough. Jaira, you are enough. And I will be content in every circumstance. Cause you are Jaira, and you are enough. I don't wanna forget. I can see so clear what it's all about. So stay by my side when the sun goes down. Don't want to forget how I feel right now. You are Jaira, you are enough. Jaira.
the lid.